Today we're going to take a look at and show you how to install both the Optronics Light Guide LED Backup Light, part number BUL602CB, and the Optronics Light Guide LED Trailer Tail Light. This has the red lens, its part number is STL602RB. Now here's what our lights are going to look like when we have them on. We kind of turned out the lights here just to give you an idea of how they're going to look. Now when you use these as a pair, they meet the requirements for the backup lights. So they're going to be compliant in that aspect. You're not going to have to worry about having any additional lights anywhere. There's a total of 12 diodes. You can see we've got the eight here on the outside and then they're going to have four more internally there. I like that little kind of that X that you see there. That's unique. You don't see that in a whole lot of lights. So overall, it's going to give us a nice bright light, but it's also going to be unique in appearance. Now overall, the new LED lights have a lot of advantages to them. They last much, much longer than typical incandescents. We don't have to worry about getting in there and changing the bulbs on them. Also, they give a cleaner and brighter light as compared to what we used to see out of them. And they're not going to draw as much power. Now these are going to work out really well whether you're using them on a truck like we are or on a trailer. They're fully submersible. They're sonically sealed all the way around that back cover. So you won't have to worry about any water or moisture getting towards the inside of the light. I think that's really important in trailers. Maybe not so much in trucks. Hopefully the back end of your truck isn't going to be submerged in water. But if it is, I guess we won't have to worry about it. Now the polycarbonate lens is going to be really good at resisting cracks, so it, it'll kind of absorb that and also resist scratching. So for a long time to come, your lights should look really, really nice. Additionally, they use surface mount technology inside. It's kind of a newer circuitry. Uh, this is going to run a little bit cooler. It's better at dissipating the heat, but also it's going to absorb more bumps or, or kind of the harshness that we'll see going down the road as our truck's bouncing around or our trailer's bouncing around. So they should remain very, very dependable. Now overall, our light is going to be six and a half inches long. It's going to be two and three eighths of an inch wide. And then from the surface of the light to the back, it's about an inch and three quarter. Now as far as this light goes, it's going to share all of the same features that our reverse light has. So we've got the surface mount technology, polycarbonate lens, the extremely efficient, bright, and long-lasting LEDs. So overall, both of them are going to be almost identical. The difference is, of course, in the functions that they provide. This one giving us our running lights, tail lights and brakes. This one giving us our reverse lights. I'm going to share the same dimensions as well. Now, when in tail light mode, you'll see we're going to have the illuminated X. That's a really unique design. I like that. Very similar to the reverse light. It has kind of an X shape in it. Now we're going to hit the brakes, hit our blinker, and we'll see how the additional diodes light up to give us that brightness that we need. You can see those outer diodes lighting up, indicating a change in direction. And those will be the same lights that come on when we hit our brakes. Now one thing to keep in mind, the reverse lights are both sold separately. You're going to need one for each side to be compliant. And the same for our tail stop and turn. You're going to need one for each side. The grommet is also something you'll need to pick up if you don't already have one. Now for our installation, we're going to be putting these on a flatbed. These lights are extremely common both the reverse and turn and tail lights in these applications anymore. I think you're going to see more and more people doing a replacement like this. They're also going to work out really well for your six inch trailer lights that need replacement kind of on the back. You'll see them used kind of universally in both places. If you take a look here at the passenger side, you can see we've already got these installed. Got our rubber grommet here that we're using. Our reverse is here close to the middle. Stop, turn, and tail light going to be closer to the outside there, also in a rubber grommet. So we're going to go through the process and show you how to do it. We're doing these together because we're going to ground the plugs in which go in the back of the light. We're going to ground those together as they go over to the actual frame. So we just have one good big ground point. We're going to start with our two wire pigtail. This is going to go to our reverse light signal. You can see as I took the old ones out, I marked them there. So we know this is our reverse. We can pull that off. And we're going to use butt connectors to make our connections here. So we're going to trim that off and strip it back. And 
I'm going to use part number DW05743. It's a heat shrink butt connector. I like using heat shrinks, especially when we're on the outside of the vehicle, because then we really don't have to worry about any moisture getting in there causing corrosion or holding dirt in there causing corrosion, which is eventually going to lead to our lights shorting out. I'm going to trim off a little bit of the red wire on our pigtail here, but I do like to leave a little bit of extra. That's just gonna give you a little bit of wiggle room on the wiring if you ever need to make changes down the road or if light fails, maybe you hit it with a board you're loading up, break the lens, you need to replace it. This will give us a little bit to work with. That's just gonna go on the other side. I'm gonna crimp that down. Then we'll use a heat source to shrink it. Now for your heat source, you can use a heat gun you can use a mini torch or generally what I do, if I don't have too many to do, is just use a lighter. The key is not to overheat it. You don't want to melt it or anything. You just want it to shrink. And as you do that, if you notice, looks like the wire's magnified now. And then there's just a little bit of clear gel that comes out of the end there. Indicates you got a good connection made. That's what you're looking for. Now to house the light, we're gonna use a rubber grommet. So we need to place that in. We just press firmly all the way around the outside until it seats in there. If you look on the back, we've got this little lip. We wanna make sure that lip goes behind our mounting surface. Kind of spreads itself out there as we do that. Now we'll take our light like to start one end of it, and the light has this lip right here. As we place that in, that's going to get a hole, and that'll keep everything in place securely. All right, just like that. That's going to give it a little bit of wiggle room, so if we do bump it, it'll flex a little bit. I kind of like that. And then for our plug here, that's going to plug into the back of the light. And with the two wire, you're just going to have two prongs. And we just want to line it up. Our wire is going to face the open side. You can see we've got that kind of three walls on each side. Just get that lined up, push down, and you want that to go all the way down to where it's resting on top, just like that. There's a little bit of grease in there on the back side of the light already, so you really don't have to worry about dielectric grease. Now for our ground, I'm going to take that, I'm going to mount it right over here. But I want to tie my tail light into that same ground. We'll show you how to do that here in just a second. That way we just drill in one hole, putting in one self-tapping screw. We're going to be using the three-wire pigtail for this. White is going to be our ground. Red needs to go to your stop turn signal. And then the black is going to go to your running light signal. Now we're going to use the same butt connectors that we used for our light here for the turn and the brake signal. So just get that placed on our stripped wire. Now for my running light signal, yours is probably gonna be the same way. I've got one single wire that comes out, but it can't just end here at the running light. I'm also doing the side marker light here on the back corner and on the front corner, so I wanna be able to extend that. So what we're gonna do, strip this one back a little bit further I'm going to twist it up really well, and this time I'm going to use part number DW05744. It's just a slightly larger heat shrink butt connector. If that doubled over, we can slide that up and in. Get that crimped down. We're going to strip back both sides of this and join them together. That one stripped. Let's strip this one. Let's put them right side by side. We're going to twist those together. And then we can take that larger heat shrink, slide that down over both of those. 
And not only will we get power to our plug, but it'll have a continuation so we can get those other lights hooked up. Now this is basically going to be in lieu of your quick splice connectors, the ones you'll put on there and kind of clamp down. Generally those are going to cut and damage the wire. I really dislike using them, so I always go with heat shrink so we can shrink that down the same way. Now we're going to connect our red wire to the turn and brake signal, doing the Basically the same thing, just with that slightly smaller butt connector. Now we're just gonna pop that light in the same way we did our reverse light there. We can get that plug plugged in. I like how they're nice and secure. They fit in there really well. Those plugs, I don't think you'll ever have to worry about them coming out unless you actually remove them. Now we've got our ground wires here. Let's kind of get this up and out of the way for now. We'll take care of that in a minute. What I'm going to do is draw them over. We're going to go right over here. So right about there, let's splice them together. To do that, we're going to cut. Now I'm going to save this longer ring terminal in. Strip both of these back. And we'll twist those up and basically we're going to connect these the same way we did that running light extension. We'll use one butt connector, go in. crimp down. Then the other side will be our pigtail coming out. This one we're stripping back about twice as far. Turn it, flex it, place it in. Now we're going to decide where we want our ground. I'm going to loop that up kind of like that. So about right there. I'm just going to drill it out and then we'll use a self-tapping screw. Just like that. And I don't have our ground established. Now with our other wires here, you can tape these up, make them look nice. So do whatever you want to do with them. Just keep them up and secure. You don't want these hanging down. If we left these hanging down here, they'd likely get hung on something. So get them taped up and get them secured up. We'll test it out, make sure it's working properly. Of course, we need to turn on the running lights, make sure our red light's working. Do our blinker. Do our brakes. Now let's also check out our reverse signal there. Make sure it's coming on as well. And that'll do it for our look at the Optronics Light Guide LED backup light and trailer taillight with red lens.